Hey guys and welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Temi. Welcome. I am a advanced chemical engineering master's student at Imperial College London and in this video I'm going to be sharing some of the top tips that I've learned over the past five years that helped me get a first class in my first degree. So if you are interested, do keep watching. So as I mentioned, my first degree was a degree in chemical and energy engineering. This is my reaction video if you want to see it. I feel like I've got some few, a few tips to share. Some of you have actually asked me if I have any tips. I don't know if they'll help, but I'm just sharing what has helped me. The first set of tips are if you are sort of at the beginning slash middle of your degree, not really like last minute tips. So I'm gonna go on to the last minute tips towards the end of the video. So my very first tip is to convert lecture notes into your own language. Now, now, I don't mean write out the whole lecture note series. Some of my modules have over 200 slides. It's just not feasible to write out absolutely everything and it's actually a waste of time. Work smart, not hard. What I mean is when you're in the lecture, listening to the lecture, if something that you see on the lecture slides is not in a way that you would describe it or you think, why is it written that way? It's a lot simpler to just write this write it down. When you're revising or going back over your notes, your brain doesn't have to put in the extra effort of converting someone else's language into your own and trying to understand what that means. You can just look at it for information and look at it for what it is. And let's be honest, a lot of the time our professors are like doctors who are taught to explain things in a certain way. And personally for me, I'm someone that is precept upon precept, principle upon principle. If something comes from the ideal gas law, I'm going to write down this comes from the idle gas law because sometimes things are just they get too complicated in engineering and a lot of the time things are from fundamental principles and sometimes these professors be writing lecture notes in a way that is just so complex and doesn't need to be complicated leading on from that tip it's important to write down when you're in the lecture write down things that you don't get so if you don't understand something the lecture just said i would put a question mark near it or put what exactly does the y-axis mean what are the units for this just so when you're going back over it and you have questions you can email the lecturer specifically those questions and you know they're on slide 56 as opposed to remembering that there was something you didn't understand about the lecture. That is just a waste of time to have to spend time scouring through the lecture to find the things that you didn't get. Highlight things that are mandatory to know. I'm sure everyone does this subconsciously, but sometimes we highlight too much of the page. Sometimes there are things that the lecturer has put in bold, like equations that you definitely, definitely have to memorize. I would highlight those and make sure that the highlight color that I use is specific to things I have to memorize. Another good tip is if you actually go to your lectures and I really recommend that you do although it can be long sometimes like really long I would recommend going to them because sometimes they hint at things that will be in the exam um, and they might not record the lecture on which they're hinting something in so definitely go to the lectures and write down if they've put if they spent a long time on something or they've put this is really important for you to know there's sometimes this language that lectures use sometimes where they're hinting that it's it's coming up somewhere so I would highlight that and put exam alert put a free exclamation mark so exam alert make it bold so I know that when I'm revising I can go back to that thing and learn it properly for lecture notes I recommend color coding or coming up with a general formula for what things mean and it sort of goes back to the very first tip certain highlights will mean maybe mean different things to you certain colors and making sure that that is consistent throughout all your notes another tip that's related to the first tip sorry for the order of this but these are sort of just tips all about notes and lectures and digesting lectures related to the first tip for me sometimes there's certain forms of equations that don't make sense to me so for example if they've put an equation all on one line when it should have like a divide line or something like that or they've put let's say x divided by y divided by z it's it's literally just x times z divided by y like why have you done that so sometimes i can rewrite the equations whilst i'm in the lecture to to, to so i can see it how I understand it. Or if an equation is written a certain way to emphasize specific relationship between the variables, I can write down why it's written in this way. And lastly, on this little set of lecture note digestion tips is to write to your future self. If you've ever seen my notes on my iPad, if you've watched my iPad study video, you will know that I talk to myself. So I know what headspace I was in at the time. For example, if I'm in a three hour lecture and I checked out at one hour 30, I'm going to write, you checked out here 
click on the recording, go back to the lecture at 10.35 a.m. to resume watching. In that way, it means that I'm looking out for my future self and basically telling my future self, listen, you've got this far, I'm gonna need, I'm gonna need you to, 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 to carry the rest sort of thing. You know, two months, a month down the line, I might go back to it as I'm reviewing my notes and I remember, oh, in my notion, I've put down this lecture I didn't finish properly, even though I went to the whole thing, I, I've highlighted that red. And if you haven't watched my notion video, go and watch that for how I keep track of what lectures I've completely understood understood completely gone through i'm able to go back to that lecture and be like oh i stopped 10 35 a.m i can go back to ms teams on this date because notability takes track of everything that you do what time you've modified something go back to that day and finish the lecture and that way you're sort of looking out for yourself some of these lectures are two to three hours long it's so unrealistic to think that you're actually going to pay attention to every little thing and you're going to digest it all you just won't so in this way you make sure that you actually have digested all the lecture content just a quick disclaimer as well for engineering there's a lot for me for my degree degrees that I've done anyway. This is my second degree, so I haven't, I haven't done more than two. There's a lot of fluff. There's a lot of stuff that these lecturers put in the notes and they're just like, oh, this is just for your information. This is, you know, interesting to know if you're interested. It's just like, I'm only interested in getting the grade I want. That's all I'm interested in. Fair enough, yeah, the people that want to do PhDs, it's just not for me. So sometimes with all that extra fluff that they do, for example, a lecture series could be 200 slides, but quite frankly, only 75 slides are actually testable. I've just wasted so much time trying to learn everything. Work smart, not hard. And what do I mean by that? I mean, making sure that if you're ever going to take your lecture notes and write notes from them, make sure you're writing notes for the things that you definitely, definitely, definitely know are examinable. There is no point you doing for six or seven modules, detailed notes and let's say 40% of your notes are useless because they're not going to be examined. And it's also going to take you so much time to do that whilst you've got coursework, whilst you've got deadlines, whilst you've got your thesis to do or like your design project. I know for medics and I know for other degrees that are really time consuming, you tend to like write out handwritten notes from their lecture slides and just like write down pages and pages and pages of notes. For engineering, that has not worked for me. I do not have the, the time or the mental capacity to do that. And for me, it didn't really make sense to do that. I could put my time in somewhere else that's more important and I'll explain that now. So onto the second set of tips and this is for revision, exams and last minute. So if you're coming up a month to two weeks, two weeks to a month or two months to your first exam or to exam season. These are the tips that might help, that have helped me and it's actually the strategy that I'm doing now. So as I mentioned before, I didn't see the point in making handwritten notes for all my modules. What I do is for revision, I might read over main concepts or read over the lecture slides, but quite frankly, that's, that's also not gonna be very efficient. So what I actually do is I start off with the questions. I start with the question. So if I'm revising, I haven't looked at this module since last year, December, because it's only, you know, been taught in semester one and my exams at the end of semester two. I go back to that module and I go through every single example they did during the lecture because with engineering, it's very problem solving heavy. I probably should have said that at the beginning. A lot of it is not information rec recollection. A lot of it is problem solving. And with problem solving, you do have to recall the information. You do have to recall the equations that are applicable. You do have to recall Cool methods, but a lot of it is more problem solving heavy. So I focus on problem solving for my revision. And I go back to every single example that the lecture went through in every single module. Every single example is basically a roadmap to the exam. And a lot of the times the examples parallel the exam questions in some sort of way. So I go through all my lecture slides, do the examples with a fine tooth comb. I make sure I understand every unit, new term I've not heard of. If there's a sigma and it means something different, to some, and this is even more important with online exams that are open book, you need to have a bank of completed questions that you have access to during the open book exams. You're able to now go to your question bank of completed questions that are very, very clear and being able to pull out the questions that are relevant and literally have it side by side. That's gonna be great if you have open book exams. However, going back to my point, I focus mainly on the questions. What you will find when you're doing the questions is that you are revising 
the content because the questions if you don't understand the questions or understand how the lecture's gone through it or done something it's going to force you to go back to the relevant part of the lecture material the lecture is basically signaling that this part is important learn it by doing that you're going back to the lecture material you're relearning that and then you're able to apply it to the question in which you have the answers to because the person went through it in the lecture and that way you're able to teach yourself the module again revise it fresh and basically have every important example and have the knowledge retained in your mind because you've gone through it with a fine tooth comb in addition to that whilst you're doing these questions do not forget dimensional analysis now what what do i mean by dimensional analysis if you've never heard of that term before take extra care of units now in engineering if you are a chemical engineer or if you are maybe a mechanical or basically all the engineerings take care of your units because units can honestly make you or break you a lot of the time lecturers can put in different units to trick you they put in i don't know density is kilogram per meter cubed and then they've put in a volume of centimeters cubed they need you to convert that centimeter cubed into meters cubed for you to be able to for all your units to cancel out and sometimes they try and trick you with that do you pay attention to your unit sometimes they might skip over the conversions that they've done but make sure you pay attention to them because it can literally be the difference between you getting full marks and you getting half marks on a question going along with that don't just think about dimensions but also think about the numbers what i mean mean by that is if the lecture has gone through a question or the numbers are on there what I want you to do is actually put that into the calculator yourself so grab your calculator even though he's put in there 3000 times 1999 divided by 7066 I just made that up put it into your calculator and press enter the amount of times that I have been doing lecture questions or past paper questions that I've just you know assumed that you know because these answers these model answers are model answers it's going to be correct it's going to be fine because I usually like to write out the model answers or the, to make sure that it's you know being instilled into my brain and I'm not it's not just passive learning if it's a new equation that I'm not familiar with I might have missed out a minus sign or I might have missed out a pair of brackets and that can change my answer completely so I make sure I put it in the calculator so my answers match up with what is in that model answer that might seem like a really really small tip but even like yesterday I forgot a minus sign somewhere that I didn't see in the equation even though the model answers are right in front of me and because I've made that mistake once I know to look out for it and I'm not going to make it again use your peers as a resource you know if you contact your lecturer they might not answer you straight away so making sure that you have friends that are you know on the same path as you that want that first class that want that distinction obviously don't be a leech but you know give and take another tip is do not be an island in any degree that you're doing just don't be an island because there are things that your peers will understand that you might not understand they might come from a certain background and they might have done different courses like before they went to uni so you can definitely like use their knowledge if they understand something in a different way to the way you understand it or they picked up something from the lecture that you didn't necessarily pick up don't be an island and don't think you can do your whole degree alone because you can't you need people peer-to-peer -peer learning is actually really really important and i know they say this a lot in uni and stuff like that but there's been so many countless examples of when someone else has ex explained something to me and i'm like oh my gosh okay that makes sense now i really recommend getting a degree classification spreadsheet for your degree when i was at the university of leeds we could download this degree classification spreadsheet you can put in your module grades from like second year and above and it would calculate what you need to get in your final year or your penultimate year to get a certain grade and i definitely definitely recommend doing this because it just motivates you it's now gone from what do i need to get in every single module to what do i need to get overall and it's one number like i might only need to get like 60 percent to get a first class overall i think people that study engineering or like medicine are kind of like in the overachiever category just because you do need like ridiculous grades to get into these degrees anyway like my peers and and myself myself included like we can be really hard on ourselves just having that that classification calculator where it tells you exactly what you need in each module and overall in a certain year can really take the pressure off or you know light a fire under your butt to work harder for the last year or for the last damn period definitely build one if you haven't got one uh, if you you're an engineer you should be able to do that on excel like see if your university has one something else also to note is if you are struggling in sort of like any way whether it's mentally physically you're ill or something like that during your degree make sure you do let your uni know it's not necessarily you applying for like mitigating circumstances but just letting them know so that if it does adversely affect you there's a record of it and it also is completely confidential as well 
it also just makes sure you have like a security blanket for your degree in case you don't get the grade you want for a valid reason. So to make sure that your 9k or 9k plus investment every single year is not it put a disadvantage because of something that was outside of your control. So what am I saying in this whole section of tips? If you do not have time to go through your lecture notes with a fine tooth comb and, and then do the questions that are in the lecture notes and then do the past paper questions, just go to the questions and the questions will teach you the content and that is a way more efficient way to learn. It's better that you have an idea of what's going to come up in the exam and then, then going to the lecture notes than the other way around and it basically allows you to eliminate a lot of that fluff from the lecture notes so that you don't have to do, learn it in detail or you don't have to spend a lot of time learning something that's never going to come up. Learn this from me because the amount of times where I spent a lot of time revising lecture one of the content even though it's just for example the background of biochemical engineering. I spent a lot of time writing that making my notes pretty, making my notes excellent then at the end of the module when they're doing the revision session the lecturer is like oh by the way lecture one is not examinable content and I'm like but if I'd gone to the exam first or looked at the lecture questions first, I would have known that the, the kind of trend here is that lecture one isn't coming up at all. And it's not to say that it will never come up, but I'm just I'm just trying to like give tips on ways to revise smart and not hard, especially in engineering. I don't know if you relate to this or if you find that the tips I'm using you've also used as well. Yeah, this is this is it. Uh, I hope you guys have found that useful, specifically for engineering students. If you guys, if you're not an engineering student i think the things i've said are pretty generic um yeah do let me know in the comments if it was useful if it was helpful i wish you guys all the best in the upcoming exam season i have exams starting next week uh, i know you're gonna smash it so make sure you work hard knuckle down and it will be worth it in the end i will see you guys in the next video